Hello, my sassy scholars. In this video, we're going to talk about three different authors. Three. Get out your pens and paper so you can write all this stuff down. First, we're going to talk about Herman Melville. Now, I promised you I would be honest, and I have to tell you, I'm not a huge fan of Herman Melville. Um, I find Moby Dick to be boring. I've read it probably 50 times, and None of them have been pleasant experiences. I've had to read them for either classes I've taken or classes I teach. Um, it's just not my style of writing. It's very detailed. Um, it's boring to me. But you might like it. So I don't want to discount him for those of you out there who might like it. But let's talk about who he is. So we're finally moving out of New England. <laughs> and Herman Melville was actually born in New York City. And uh, Moby Dick is probably his most popular, um, it's not probably, it is his most popular work, but he did write other things like Bartleby the Scrivener and Billy Bud Sailor, which was actually published after he died. And um, he uses symbolism, which we've talked about, and he uses allegory. Um, and he uses these very intricate um, symbols to like convey deeper meanings and and to me it's a struggle to find them and, and to get them but you know they're absolutely there and he's talking really about the conflict between good and evil and um like really the inherent struggles within the human psyche so on that level i think it's really the, the works are really interesting but to get there to peel away the layers of the onion to get to that is sometimes a struggle for me um uh during his lifetime he was not that popular it was more after he passed away and in the 20th century when he was dug up and then he was more celebrated. So in his own lifetime, he wasn't all that successful as a writer. So he did a bunch of other things, including being a Wellerman, which we're going to talk about. Um, he, you know, sort of his ideas about like sort of the existential themes, um, these very intricate narratives and the depth of his symbols you know, have influenced, you know, generations of writers. And of course, he is uh, very, you know, well loved and, and explored in different venues and, and media formats. And so he's an important writer. He's definitely American romantic because he uh, combines the forces of nature and balances that with uh, science and reason. And so uh, he definitely relies on focusing on the natural world. And so he definitely fits he fits the model, but he is a breakaway from, you know, our New England transcendentalists. He is not a transcendentalist. So now let's talk about Emily Dickinson. So Emily Dickinson is a really interesting character. And of course, she is in New England. Um, she lived from 1830 to 1886, and she was a poet. And she was known for this unconventional style, these, um, you know, this you know, she used different kind of punctuation in poetry that hadn't been used before. And um, she explored themes like death and nature and love and the human experience. Um, and she lived a reclusive life. So she was never like out and about. You know, she was writing, you know, from, you know, from the privacy of her home. And uh, she really lived in the part of New England that was still kind of puritanical. Um, and that influenced, uh, definitely influenced her writing style. So, um, so she uses unconventional punctuation, a regular capitalization, and compact uh, verses. And she utilizes dashes and silent rhyme to create a very distinct rhythmic pattern. Um, she focuses on nature, death and immortality, love and passion. And um, she remained unpublished during her lifetime, kind of like Melville. And um, it wasn't after her until after her death that her sister discovered her extensive collection of poems, and that led to their publication, and her you know popularity and subsequent acclaim. So she never recognized her success in her lifetime. So you can use the lemon the lemons. I'm tired. You can use the lens of feminist interpretation. Um, you know, lots of folks have done that. And you can also um, look at the language that she uses and her, you know, preoccupation with mortality, and life and death, and um, the paradoxes that are that exist within her work. So that's Emily Dickinson. Now let's talk about Margaret Fuller.
So Margaret Fuller is the complete opposite of Emily Dickinson. She was a feminist, uh, an outspoken feminist. She was an editor, first female editor of The Dial, which was a transcendental uh, magazine at the time. And uh, she is also from New England. Um, and uh, she had a great education, which was very uncommon for women in her time. And she was, you know, part of the discussion groups and the discourse groups uh, held with the transcendentalists. Um, she was a prolific writer and known for her essays that she would write. And the most famous thing that she wrote is called um, Feminine in the 19th Century. So, um, or Women in the 19th Century. <coughs> and why that's important, or what that connects to, is that a predecessor of hers um, in uh, the UK... Mary Wollstonecraft wrote a similar sort of manifesto called, um, um, why can I not think right now? A Vindication of the Rights of Woman. Whew, my brain. So this was her manifesto. And one of the critiques I have about it, it it's good for, and it's excellent. It raises excellent points about the time, but she really wanted it to mean something. So she repeats herself a lot. And so, you know, once you get the basic ideas down, like she just kind of regurgitates that over and over and over again. Um, you know, she was she was connected in with all the big people like Emerson and Thoreau, you know, and, you know, she, of course, had a huge influence on transcendentalism being the editor of the magazine. So, you know, she's le she's um, left a legacy in the feminist community. And, of course, um, you know, her her critical essays about life at the time, you know, still often in many ways remain relevant today. So she was definitely a pioneer, definitely a romantic, and definitely a transcendentalist. So those are our three authors for, for this particular module. You're going to be doing some work with some sea shanties because Melville was, was a Wellerman, and then you will be um, comparing and contrasting Fuller and uh, Dickinson. So looking forward to seeing you in the next video.